next we explore the mechanisms behind gratitude. I think of mechanisms as the why. Why does this work? Many people say, yes, I understand gratitude is something that's good, it's something that's important, but why does it do what it does? One of the basic reasons is that there is an upward spiral between gratitude and positive emotions. We know that when people are grateful for someone or something, the process of expressing gratitude enhances the experience, making it more enjoyable, which enables them to experience more positive emotion. When we experience more positive emotion, we're better able to actually see good things happening around us. We're better able to recognize the good gifts and intentions of other people, which makes us more grateful, which increases our positivity, which makes us even more grateful and even more positive and even more grateful and even more positive. It cr puts us into an upward spiral. You can compare that with the downward spiral of when you're running late and then you feel frustrated and you can't get a cab and you finally get a cab and the cab driver's rude and then you're stuck in traffic and then you're overwhelmed and you just get more and more frustrated, more and more critical, frustrated at yourself, frustrated at other people and downward you go. So we know that gratitude does what it does partially because it puts us into an upward emotional state. It increases positivity it enhances the experience, meaning it elongates the experience. So if my boyfriend ever brings me flowers, happens every once in a while, not as often as I'd like, if he were to bring that to me and I take the time to appreciate it and be grateful for it, it elongates that experience. It enables me to feel that positivity even longer. We also know that it, that process enables us to savor. There's many different ways that we can savor, and gratitude, appreciation, is a form of savoring, getting more positive emotion out of the same thing. Another interesting mechanism behind gratitude is this ability to consummate the experience. Consummate the experience, meaning bring it to an end. They've done studies where a person would receive a positive intervention or a grateful deed from someone else. Let's say a person was walking, they dropped their books, someone helped them pick them back up, and then somehow in one experimental condition, they would distract the person. So the person would not have the opportunity to think about the fact that they're grateful. Whereas another person gets the opportunity to express gratitude. When you phone them up later and you ask them, hey, how complete did that interaction feel? If they were distracted and were not given the opportunity to actually say thank you, they're more likely to say, yeah, you're right, something felt a little incomplete about it. Gratitude actually seems to put the bow on and tie off the experience, that if someone does something good for you, or it's a condition where you've received positive benefit and you don't express gratitude for it, it may seem like it's not actually complete, which I think is a beautiful way of thinking about gratitude, bringing things to a close. It also counters what we call the hedonic treadmill. The hedonic treadmill is our tendency to adapt to the positive emotion that we experience from positive things. It's our tendency to adapt to the positive feeling from, from getting something new or from tasting something good or from an interaction. And we call it a treadmill because if you expect that people or things would bring you happiness or just life events are going to bring you happiness and that's the only place where we get our gratitude from, people will feel like they're running in place. You're running and you're running and running, but you're not actually getting more happiness in your life, more well-being. Gratitude counters the hedonic treadmill. People who score high on gratitude are also more likely to score lower on materialism, meaning they don't expect that things will bring them happiness or they don't need material things to bring them happiness. That doesn't mean that they might not like material goods, but it's that they don't need them when they feel grateful. And this next reason might be why, because social comparison is strongly correlated with materialism. And when people are grateful, they tend to experience less social comparison. Meaning when I'm grateful for how green my own grass is, I'm not looking to my neighbor at how green their grass might be and comparing myself to them. I'm not looking around at what other people have thinking I should be doing what they're doing or my website's not as good as theirs or I don't have what they have and I should have more. 
When I'm grateful for what I do have, it decreases my sense of social comparison, which is important because social comparison is highly correlated with life dissatisfaction. And it decreases stress. Gratitude tells the body, good things are happening. Life is good because I have good things happening to me. This decreases the stress response in the body, which may be one of the reasons why it can contribute to better sleep and better health and vitality. So these are some of the many mechanisms behind how and why gratitude works. Can you think of any others that might influence why gratitude does what it does?